guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car track SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Mercedes-Benz E350, courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one because essentially I've been reviewing the E-Class for about six years now. So not only that, this was actually the first car where I actually tested out park assist for the first time where this thing automatically parked for you. So we'll get a little more into that later, but essentially this thing looks like a smaller S-Class. So the looks are 100% on point. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering wheel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust glove, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so essentially there are two different configurations for the 2023 E350. You got the rear wheel drive configuration starting at $56,750 and the formatic all wheel drive starting at $59,250. But regardless of which configuration that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the E350 will be a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 255 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. Power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time is going to differ slightly for the rear wheel drive setup. It's going to come in at 6.1 seconds for the all wheel drive, six seconds flat with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 31 on the highway for the rear wheel drive, 21 city, 29 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the E350, one to mention to you, guys the drive modes so there's a silver kind of uh, toggle switch labeled dynamic it stands for dynamic select that's essentially going to be your drive modes drive modes will include eco comfort sport and sport plus adjusting things like the shift points throttle response the steering sensitivity and actually the suspension settings as well you don't usually see that even on luxury vehicles so i like that but anyways now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway Let's put the E-Class here to the test. Let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react and let's see how quickly we can get the E350 here up to speed. All right, here we go. Manual shift mode. There it is. Shoot, man, this thing is quick. I like it, I like it. That is plenty quick. That was, that's not just good enough to merge you onto the highway. That's good enough to put a smile on your face when you hit the gas. That is an incredible acceleration. Zero to 60 in six seconds flat feels wonderful in the E350 and because we got the all-wheel drive configuration there was no slipping whatsoever so power instantly put to the ground definitely not going to have any issues obviously in the snow either paddle shifters they were okay not the quickest I've ever felt and quite honestly Mercedes-Benz does have quicker reacting paddle shifters for their AMG cars for example so I know they exist but honestly I'm not sure how many people are going to be using the paddle shifters in this thing anyways and again plenty quick so I loved that acceleration here even in the E350 so wonderful anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.8 inch solid rear disc as far as the braking feel goes it's been perfectly fine let me just hit the brakes here it's perfectly fine there's no soft spots or dead spots in the braking whatsoever as expected from mercedes-benz they typically do a wonderful job with braking feels with all of their vehicles for that matter then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent four link front suspension in the back independent five arm multi-link rear suspension and a lowered adaptive damping suspension coming standard as well. Now what that is, essentially it's gonna monitor each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So it is gonna give you the best of both worlds. A lot of times other manufacturers will offer an adaptive suspension up as an option. So we do love that it comes standard on the E350 here. So that is, again, gonna give you incredible ride quality and better handling as well, but it gets better Better actually because there's an optional air suspension that goes for $1,900 and that is going to give you even better ride quality on top of that so we did want to mention that available option as well so ultimately as far as ride quality goes so far it's been perfectly fine I will say Hagerstown has some pretty darn smooth roads but so far my short test drive here today ride quality as expected has been 100% on point as far as cabin noise goes since we're going 53 miles per hour right now you guys can 
tell, there isn't a whole lot of wind noise or exterior road noise coming into the cabin. And wind is pretty decent today, so quite honestly, I'm very impressed with that wind noise. And I did want to mention, there is an acoustic comfort package. It goes for $1,100, and that is not only going to give you a laminated front windshield, but also laminated front door glass as well, which you don't always get even on luxury vehicles. It's usually always just the windshield, but not always the front door glass. So we do appreciate that package if you want the most serene cabin. As far as steering sensitivity goes, as we still have it in sport driving mode, it's actually quite nice. I like it in the sport driving mode, but just for an example here, let me go ahead and put it back to comfort. Yeah, it instantly loosens up. That is a very noticeable difference when it comes to the steering feel, depending upon what drive mode that you put it in. So if you wanted a heavier feel to the steering, go ahead and put it in that sport or sport plus driving modes. Or if you wanted a looser steering, you got the comfort like I just put it back to. So definitely a big difference there when it comes to steering sensitivity. And touching on visibility, this is the E-Class. You're 100% not gonna have any issues with rear visibility. I could definitely tell you that right off the bat. It's wonderful. And rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the E350 as well, meaning whenever the E350 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So one less thing you got to worry about there is kind of a convenience feature. So that's going to assist with forward visibility. And there is a head up display that goes for $1,100. We don't have it today, but that is going to project your speed, speed limit, and safety information up onto your windshield. So again, assisting with forward visibility there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mercedes-Benz E350. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz E350, finished in the most creative color name I've ever come across. It is labeled black. So that is the exterior color that we have on this one here today. But also wanted to mention before we get started on the front here, this one is made in Germany. The VIN actually starts with a W and I am somewhat surprised because the GLE SUV I just got done reviewing was made in the US, but yet the E-Class is made in Germany in case anybody was curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front. To the sides, LED headlights do come standard across the board. And by the way, full LED headlights come standard. So not just the low beam, but the high beam as well. So that is pretty cool. Automatic feature coming with that meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there, but also automatic high beams coming standard as well. And that's actually a new standard feature for last year's model. So that's just carried over to the 2023 model as well. So what that means is if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beam sense. So kind of a convenient feature there. And you gotta love that diamond block front grille up front. We do have an AMG line package though. So it is gonna add a lot of gloss black accents and uh, the diamond block front grille as well. So definitely looks good. I believe that's a $750 option. You do have some added chrome trim found on that front lip then as well. So overall, like I said at the very beginning of the video, this looks like just a slightly smaller S-Class, but that is why I like the E-Class. So definitely big fan of the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the E350, chrome window surrounds do come standard. Chrome accents found on the door handles, the upper portion of those door handles as well. So I always like to mention that. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will also be heated with LED integrated turn signals then as well. And there is a $275 option I want to mention because we do have it. You're not going to be able to see it because it's daytime, but we actually have the Mercedes-Benz projection lights which project down onto the ground at night so from the side mirror so i'm a big fan of that i think that would look amazing at night but again i can't show it to you now but then take a look at the wheel setup 18 inch double five spoke alloys do come standard however there are 18 and 19 inch wheel designs available plenty of them including these amg style wheels as well because we had the amg line package love the amg embossed into the actual wheel itself definitely a very cool look and i always like the double five spoke design so again very elegant side profile here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of this one rear spoiler is available as an option that goes for 350 dollars obviously i can't show that to you guys right now but chrome accents found just below that mercedes-benz logo kind of tying together the two taillights there again like i mentioned at the beginning of the video that formatic badging that just means that this particular e-class has all-wheel drive so that's why we didn't get any slipping on that crazy acceleration that i did earlier led taillights do come standard you also though get led license plate lighting that's not always a standard feature even on luxury vehicles so i always like to emphasize that just below it all you will get a kind of a chrome trim accent tying together the two exhaust outlets and by the way 
integrated dual exhaust outlets finished in chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. Right, so but now since we are around to the back of the e-class when it comes to opening that rear trunk there are several different ways to go ahead and do that there's a button on the key fob button on the driver's door and there is a button of course on the trunk itself but it is a power trunk by the way so it is going to automatically open up for you and then there's a button on the trunk itself to go ahead and close it so Definitely something you don't usually see on sedans. You see it a lot of times on SUVs, but I did want to mention that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it there is of course some cargo lighting back there there is some netted storage found on the left side back there there is a cargo box available for three hundred dollars there's also a uh, kind of massive grocery bag hook available as an option that we have with us here today as well but my very favorite part because you don't usually find this on sedans if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're actually going to find a decent amount of in-floor storage so there's like this little shelf but underneath of that shelf there's a ton of space you could put ice scraper or a or inflator kit or a bunch of whatever you want to put back there so that was pretty cool but then make our way to the rear legroom that comes in at 36.2 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the back seats there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard by the way that actually comes with a tablet holder as well again another feature you don't always find rear ventilation coming standard dual phone charging ports there's actually a 12 volt power outlet back there as well that was pretty cool if you wanted heated rear seats you can get them for 580 dollars if you wanted a rear window sunshade that is available as well for an additional 440 dollars then so then making our way to the front seats power adjustable front seats do come standard you actually do get memory settings for not just the driver but the passenger as well that's for up to three different settings or three different people so a lot of times you always find it for the driver but you very rarely find it for the passenger unless you're sitting in a mercedes benz so that is pretty darn cool heated front seats of course do come standard ventilated front seats are available for 450 dollars and i love the vertical seams that's something that lexus does as well but it just completely eliminates all the awkward pressure points that horizontal seams typically give you so i always am a big fan of vertical seams like the s class has and like this particular e class has so overall with the power lumbar definitely no issues with seat comfort here in the e350 and then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped and if you wanted a wood leather combination that goes for six hundred dollars and the heated steering wheel then goes for an additional 250 dollars but perfectly fine no issues with the steering wheel then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here it does have a nice weight to it essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key got lock on top just underneath the mercedes logo you got unlock and then you got that button for the power trunk as well but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot of the brake and press that very cool design of a push button start located just to the left of the air vents there so once started up, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard. So I absolutely love this because my very favorite part, when you press the home button on the steering wheel and you go all the way to the right, there's a section called designs and display. And that allows you to completely customize the look of the digital gauges. You got classic, sport, progressive, and understated as your option. So if you wanted more of that classical look, Go with the classic setup that's going to kind of look like a digital version of the old analog gauges but it's also sport progressive and understated as well so plenty of options to completely change the look and of course you got everything else you would expect like outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty g4 statistics actually as well you wouldn't expect that but that was pretty cool when you need your next oil change the list goes on so pretty much everything you could possibly want of those digital gauges there then make your way to overall interior quality there's a panorama a roof available for an additional one thousand dollars we do have that so i'm a big fan of that home light controls with a frameless rear view mirror um home light controls are up for up to three different garage doors found just underneath of that mirror of course dual zone cloud control coming standard but also 64 colors of ambient lighting which mercedes-benz i always say does better than any other manufacturer out there just because it's so thick and bright you can actually see it a good bit even with it being broad daylight right now so i'm a huge fan of the way that ambient lighting looks if you wanted illuminated door sills then they are available for an additional 350 dollars a wireless phone charger is available for an additional 200 dollars and 
Ashwood trim though does come standard and there's a couple different looks for that I know there's kind of a darker blackish look and you got your traditional wood look right here And it is a matte finish and you can kind of feel the grooves in it as well It's a texturized finish So I'm a big fan of the way they finish the wood in this thing and that's surrounding the touch pad controller And uh, the cover for the cup holders just above the passenger side glove box the air vents all that stuff so continues on to the doors and uh Overall, interior quality is 100% in the E-Class as expected. The only thing I could think of that could possibly make this thing better is maybe a suede headliner. I think that would just put it over the top and just make it absolutely perfect. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display does come standard. And yes, I did say it is touchscreen. You can also control it using the touchpad controller and buttons located just behind the cup holders. Or you can also tell it what to do by simply saying, Hey Mercedes, how can I help? Change the ambient lighting color. And that's something your kids can probably continuously change in the back seat if you allow them to. <laughs> Anyways, Bluetooth and audio streaming, of course, coming standard as well. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system also coming standard. You can check out your climate control information up there as well. It's also your ambient lighting colors if you wanted to. And my very favorite part, or one of my favorite parts, I should say, is the theme section all the way to the bottom there that gives you trip experience, efficiency, lounge, and so on. So that essentially adjusts everything from the ambient lighting colors to opening and closing the moonroof and a bunch of other things as well. So that is a pretty cool little feature. BMW, I think, calls it experience mode. So BMW and Mercedes kind of have something very similar there, but I absolutely love it either way. So big fan of that. And of course, you can also check out your radio settings up there as well, though. So when it comes to the standard sound system, you will find eight speakers however there is an optional burmester sound system with the premium package that we have today and they have some very high quality aluminum speaker covers here surrounded in that matte wood finish on the doors which i absolutely love as well so having said all of that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one Incredible. Incredible on all fronts. Not just the bass, but the clarity was 100%. Like, that's, a, I think, what got me the most. This is some of the best clarity I've heard in quite a while. But again, the bass was perfectly fine. Clarity was insane. That was a brilliant sound system for the E-Class. I definitely would recommend that if you wanted it. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the E350 in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board with multiple different views. In addition to that, that premium package I just mentioned will also give you a surround view monitor, giving you that bird's eye view. And by the way, this is extremely high definition as well, but as always, that all is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start by mentioning IIHS top safety safety pick plus which is the very highest designation given by IIHS so that pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard you got a driver's knee airbag up front as well there is a rear seat side impact airbag available for an additional $700 if you wanted to go that route interesting little fact there BMW also offers that rear side impact airbags for just around the same price but in the new Toyota Corolla it comes standard so I think that's funny. Anyways, in the back, you're also going to have latch, AKA lower anchors to tether to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, active brake assist, detention assist, cross wind assist, blind spot assist, adaptive braking technology, and a parking damage detector as well. So if you're in a grocery store or whatever, and you got the app downloaded on your phone, it's gonna let you know if somebody opens their door into you or just rams into your car. So that's always nice. But there is also an optional driver assistance package. It goes for $1,950. That gives you adaptive cruise control, active steering assist, evasive steering assist, active blind spot assist, lane change assist, congestion, emergency braking, speed limit assist, and root base speed adaptation as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the E350, this thing has S-Class styling, which is a brilliant thing. Looks absolutely amazing. All the lines look perfect. Great ride quality as well, thanks to that lowered adaptive damping suspension I went over with you guys. Amazing interior quality. Really, the interior is basically second to none. The only thing I could think of was, again, the suede headliner that some other manufacturers come with for luxury vehicles. But other than that, I love the matte wood finishes, the aluminum speaker, covers and all the attention to detail in this thing brilliant ambient lighting it is the best without a doubt and a couple room for improvements though in the e-class is this thing can get expensive very very quickly you guys could tell i rambled off a heck of a lot of options during this review and there are a lot of them but on the plus side it kind of lets you personalize it make it your own 
And that last safety package, in my opinion, should come standard because a lot of other manufacturers, uh, not luxury manufacturers necessarily, but a lot of other regular manufacturers like Hyundai, Kia, Toyota, Honda, they'll make all of those safety features standard minus the level two autonomous driving thing that I mentioned. But other than that, 90% of that safety should come standard on the E-Class. Safety should come standard on a vehicle of this price point. But anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe with the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.